Have you heard the term bridge round, but not really understood what it is or what it has to do with venture capital? Or maybe you haven't heard what a bridge round is, but now that I've mentioned it, you're kind of curious. Well, today we're going to talk about bridge rounds, why they're important, and why there are a lot of them going on right now in startup land. And stick around to the end because we're going to talk about the biggest pitfall that bridge rounds have and that you should watch out for. So first of all, what is a bridge round? Well, a bridge round is simply a round of capital that is used to bridge a company from one funding round to the other, which is a little convoluted, right? Because isn't it a round? But usually companies raise money every time they hit kind of a new milestone or inflection point. For example, if you are an early stage company and you raise seed stage capital, you're probably working really hard to figure out product market fit. You're meeting with lots of customers, you're iterating on your product, you're trying to find that point where customers start really demanding your product and where sales starts to get a little bit easier, right? Because you're really solving a pain point that, that people have in your market. And once you have that product market fit and you're able to demonstrate that it didn't just work for one person, but it's been working for lots of people, then you are ready to raise a series A round. So that scenario is a pretty good one of where, you know, the company has a cheap product market fit and then go raise a subsequent round of funding. Or maybe you're a med medical device company and you know, you've been working hard on your R&D and you finally get to a point where you submit uh, for FDA approval. That would be another milestone. Or maybe you get FDA approval. That would be yet another milestone that you achieve. And hopefully you can see how these milestones represent inflection points in terms of valuation, right? Once a company is achieved product market fit, then they can go from kind of wandering in the wilderness, trying to find it to, hey, now we have it. Let's raise more money. Let's grow. Let's scale. Let's blow this thing up, right? Big inflection point for the business. What happens though when you run out of money and you haven't hit that milestone yet, right? Maybe you were projecting to grow a little bit more than you had anticipated, or maybe you were hoping to hit that product market fit, or maybe like in the current environment, valuations have gone sideways or declined by quite a bit. And whereas you, you've been growing and you've been doing well, you haven't grown enough to grow into the valuation from your last round, right? You haven't quite made it to that other milestone. In a way, you are in the middle of the lake without a paddle. You can almost see the, sh you can see the shoreline, you just can't get to it and you need help. That is where bridge rounds come in. So bridge rounds are usually funded by inside investors and occasionally from outside investors that have a lot of conviction around the company and want to be able to get in and view the bridge round as the only way to do so. But most of the time, the funding comes from inside investors who have the best insight into the company and look at it and say, hey, you know, it's not ideal that the company is stuck in the middle of the lake without a paddle, but it's still a great company. If we can just give them enough money to make it to the other shore, then they'll be able to raise, they'll hit that milestone, they'll be able to raise more money from other new outside investors and this journey can keep growing. That's what bridge rounds are all about. And so you oftentimes see them, right? A seed stage company doesn't quite make it to product market fit and they need just a little bit more money to get there. And so they raise, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars more or a couple million dollars more. They achieve product market fit and then they raise money from venture capitalists at the Series A stage and they take off. Find yourself in this situation where you're kind of in the middle of the lake without a paddle. You're watching your cash balance decline and you're worried that you're not going to hit that milestone in time to create that valuation inflection and attract new investors then you might want to be considering a bridge round to extend your runway and give you the time to meet those other milestones. Bridge rounds are usually structured as convertible notes or safes. The reason they're constructed as one of these two different securities is because there's a lot of risk involved in these bridge rounds, right? If I, as the investor, invest and you don't have enough money to make it all the way to the other shore, you might end up sinking, right? And going out of business. And frankly, if the company was doing really well, you wouldn't have needed these, this bridge round in the first place. So they tend to be a little, quite a bit more risky than price rounds. A convertible note is really helpful because it's a piece of debt, because it's a debt security. And as debt, it's an obligation of the company to pay back those investors. And so if the company does fail, the debt holders are gonna get paid out first. It gives them better downside protection. The other reason is that it's really hard to price the company at this point, right? 
entrepreneur, from the entrepreneur perspective, they could argue, hey, but we've accomplished so much since we raised that last round of capital. Just because we haven't hit the milestone and seen this huge inflection point, like doesn't mean that we haven't created real value. But the flip side is they haven't met the milestone. And that's why investors are hesitant to invest more money into the company, especially outside investors. There's this debate on where valuation will be. Convertible notes allow the company and the investors to kind of kick the can down the road on valuation. Now, usually there will be a cap on the valuation, which is usually investors' best guess at where the next round would come in. But then they'll also add in a discount to the next round to compensate them for taking the risk of investing now when it was so risky. And those discounts usually range in the like 10 to 30%, depending on how desperate the company is. Now, a bridge round doesn't always have to be a convertible note. Sometimes what entrepreneurs will do is that they'll reopen the last round at the same terms and valuation. And the advantage there is that because all those terms have been negotiated, theoretically, it should be much easier and much more cost effective to reopen that, raise capital and close. And from an investor perspective, if the company has been doing well and really creating value, then theoretically you're getting in at a better valuation by coming in earlier. The downside though, is that you don't get the same downside protection that you would through a convertible note, because as an equity holder, you're gonna get paid back with the other equity holders. One of the biggest pitfalls of bridge rounds is the bridge to nowhere. <laughs> and that is, like I said earlier, that's where you invest in the company through one of these bridge rounds and they still don't quite make it to their milestone. And let's be honest, that is a pretty likely scenario because it already is the case, right? We raised, we invested a bunch of money into this company. They used that money and they couldn't quite make it to their milestone. And who's to say that if we give them a little bit more that they'll be able to do it. And so the big part of due diligence in any bridge round is really digging in deep and understanding whether or not you have high conviction that they can get to that milestone and a, where they're able to attract additional investors. And if you don't think that they will, then maybe you shouldn't invest. Maybe it's better to let the company fail because sunk costs ultimately are sunk and prior investment shouldn't sway how you think about future investment. In my experience, bridge rounds have kind of cut both ways. I've been invested in bridge rounds where you know, the company ultimately didn't quite make it to another funding round, but they continue to perform well. They got to break even, so they didn't need additional capital. And then they were ultimately acquired. And the note had terms in it that gave us a really good return in the scenario that that happened. I've also been in other convertible notes and other bridge rounds where the comp we gave the company additional money and they didn't quite make it to that ultimate milestone. They ended up selling for pennies on the dollar or went out of business. Those can be really challenging situations and scenarios and not the outcome that everybody looks for. In closing, I am currently seeing a ton of bridge rounds get done. Some are getting done by reopening the last round and some are getting done through these convertible note structures. And the reason for that is that smart entrepreneurs, at least in my opinion, smart entrepreneurs are going out to investors, anybody that they can get to invest, which usually is gonna be their insiders. And they're saying to them, hey, you know, we are worried that we're not going to meet that milestone that we need to hit to raise money at a flat or an up round in the next 12 to 24 months. And so we would like to raise additional capital to give us more runway to get there. And this is especially prevalent for companies that last year raised at sky high valuations. Some of those companies are in a tough spot because they raised a lot of money at very high valuations and now valuations have declined by 30, 40, 50, even as much as 85%. So they have a long way to grow back into those really high valuations and they may need more than 12 months, which is historically what they've needed in order to hit that next increase in valuation. They may need 24 or maybe upwards of 36 months, three years in order to re reattain that same valuation that they hit in 2021. That is why you're seeing a lot of layoffs and as they're cutting their burn and trying to tighten up their business. And you're also seeing them raise uh, these convertible notes. Now, the interesting thing is a lot of these convertible notes, these bridge rounds aren't getting a lot of publicity because you know they're not really like that, hey, we just became a unicorn, you know, kind of type of announcement. It's a little bit of an admission that, you know, maybe their valuation was a little rich and they should take on additional capital to make sure they survive.
and hopefully even thrive as the market comes around and rebounds. Let me know down in the comments if that was a helpful video and check out some of my others like how will a potential recession impact equity crowdfunding? Oh, 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 oh,